What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company with a swim bait, a deer hair swim bait, a swim jig, whatever you want to call it. Black, green, with some hackle feathers. So this is a 3 8 ounce Gamakatsu swim bait head, swim bait jig, whatever. I painted this watermelon with just do it paint. I went back and forth if I wanted a black head or a green, and I, I dipped this in the green, and I let it dry, and I came back and looked, and it just turned out way better than I thought. I thought this was going to be dark, because I'll show you the colors in just a sec of what I used. I thought this was going to be too dark of a green, but with this swim bait head came white, and you can kind of see a little bit of white under there, so it was a lot lighter than, it, than I thought it was going to be. I just really, really like how this head turned out. The tail is flat wing saddle in, I think this is just pastel olive, olive. Uh, I got this from Spawn Flyfish. I, these things are great. The bucktail I used was just traditional black. Everyone's got black. And then I think this was green ginger from Musky Fool. I've got a lot of tails that look very similar. This is might either either be the pea soup or the green ginger from this is definitely a musky fool tail, I know that. But and then painted it green, 210 red, and the flash in here is holographic flashaboo in moonlight. The eyes on here were just a little bit small. I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of how small the eyes were. They were probably three or four millimeter. So I took them off and I put some seven millimeter. I wish I would have had ice. I didn't have ice. I ran out. So these are seven millimeter uh, fire. I think they're. I think that's just called what it's called fire. This bait runs about five, five and a half inches, maybe about five and a quarter. And I wanted it to be a little bit of a shorter bait. You can tell here that it looks really tall. But what I wanted to do was make it a thinner bait from side to side and then a taller bait, kind of like a traditional fish. So when a fish is looking at this, looking up, it's gonna have that thin silhouette to match the head, because this is a really thin head. You can see how thin this head is. So when I was looking at this head, I thought, and you'll see when I tie it, that I wanted it to be a thinner bait that was tall. Before we tie this up, like and subscribe, drop a comment below, something you wanna see. Junior's Fishing Company. Let's tie this up. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do before I start putting down my feathers is I'm gonna put just a thin layer of the holographic flashaboo in moonlight. I just want some flash maybe, I don't want the flash to necessarily be on top of all the feathers, but those feathers are gonna move really well, so I'm gonna put this on first. I'm starting pretty high up right by this hook point. So I have a lot of room back here that I could have added, but I want, this bait's gonna be five-ish inches. So I don't want it to, it's not gonna be some huge long bait. It's actually, I'm hoping to make it a little bit of a, a smaller bait. I could have done a bunch of small stacks, like six or seven stacks of deer hair, but I kind of just opted. I've got three stacks that I'm gonna do. It's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, but. And I'm not gonna put a rattle. I thought about putting a rattle, but I don't want that rattle to mess up all of those feathers. So I'm gonna put this flash down first, and I'm not really worried. I'm just gonna kinda put it right on top. And then I'll trim this, just because if I fold this back, it's gonna be too long, and I just don't want too much. I need a new pair of scissors. I don't want this to be super long where it goes past my feathers. It's just gonna kinda sit nice and snug underneath. And I'm not really worried about putting it on the underside just because it's gonna sit with those feathers. I'm not really gonna wrap those feathers around 360 degrees around my hook either. So I'm just gonna put these right on top so I put a little super glue on there, I let it dry. I'm not gonna fast forward through me putting these down, so I'm just gonna try and do it pretty quick. So I've just kind of layered these. I've got 
five stacks of these feathers and they're all cut at different lengths and I'm just gonna kinda put them around my hook except for on the very bottom I'm just gonna kinda rotate these they're all kinda different lengths and then I'll just kinda trim off all these little butts when I'm done there's probably 15 to 18 feathers these feathers are super thin on this saddle not all of them but the ones I picked are super thin and so I want a decent size tail so I put more feathers it's, it seems like a lot but really when these are wet it's not gonna seem like a ton at all. So I've got two more and you can see they're kinda going uh, maybe I've got a couple tinsels that are a little bit longer but I'm gonna put these maybe I'll put these ones right on top. There's a couple longer ones in here. Turn these first. Put these right on top I just don't want any of these necessarily. I could have put some bucktail down to kind of prevent them from getting caught on my hook, but I think they're still far enough back where I'm not gonna get that a ton. A bunch of tangling and stuff like that. And if you do, you do. But I don't think it's gonna be that bad. So I'll get this last little bit on here. Some tight wraps. Then I'm just going to bring a scissors here and I'll just trim all this off. Alright, that glue's pretty much dry. So I've got my first stack. So the, I'm using those the, the green and the black. And as I progress up to the head, it's going to get more and more black. I, I, I went back and forth if I wanted this bait to be really almost all green with a little black. But with the tail green and the head green, I'm thinking more of a black body. So I don't want this hair... I want plenty of room for that, those back feathers to swim. So I'm actually going to cut quite a bit off of this stack just because I really want that tail to be able to flutter. And this bucktail might kind of stop that a little bit. So I'm just going to put it right there, two wraps. And there shouldn't be a ton of flare in this first one. There's going to be some flare as I get towards the head. But this is a pretty thin stack of bucktail for how big this bait is. I mean, this head is really big. But I really like these swim bait heads. The only thing is there's no weed guard on them. So you got to be really careful when you're fishing them by weeds so I'll just get all that wrapped down I'm not gonna put any tinsel yet I'm gonna put some tinsel when I do my second stack which will be right about here so I'm gonna get my second one which is much thicker I kinda want that thick body right here so this is much a much thicker stack than that first one but I'm gonna have to cut quite a bit off of this because again I don't want I want it to be just maybe a little bit shorter than some of those first hairs so again I'm taking off a, a decent clump but what I'm gonna do with this when I put this down I'm gonna put this bucktail down and I'm gonna get it cinched and then what I'm going to do, I'll get it spun around. This is a lot of hair, so it just wants to kind of roll. So you got to be a little careful when I put tension on this to flare that stuff. I'm actually going to pinch the sides to give it a kind of a more of a bait fish style silhouette in the water. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to comb this out so they don't get all tangled. I think I've done this before in a couple videos. So I'm going to pinch this really tight. And I'm going to pull down 
about as much as my 210 will let me. And that should get that thin, because these feathers are going to be really thin. It's going to give it a thinner profile up and down, but really wide on the sides. And I'm going to end up trimming a little bit of this. And I can kind of just wrap over these hairs. And come up here. I'm going to put some flash down right here. So I'm going to put some of this flash down. And I'm actually going to bring it back almost to the end of my bait. It's going to be kind of long. And I have quite a bit here. More than I would even normally put on. But I kind of want this to be a little bit of a flashier bait. So I'm going to put, and this is the only flash I'm not going to put any more on, so it's really only two stacks of it. So the more you put on, it's just not a lot that I'm putting on continuously. It's just one or two bigger ones. So I'll get all that pulled up. I really need new scissors. So I'll get this flipped around so the next one I'm going to put is on the bottom and again it's going to be relatively long I'll just have a little bit to trim off try and get that spun kind of hold it in place give it some tight wraps and I'll still have plenty of room for my last bit of deer hair so this last bit that I put on, it's not necessarily a thicker amount or more, more hair than what that second stack was. Because again, I don't want this bait to be some bulky, huge thing swimming through the water. If you have seen the new Northland Minnesota mullets or whatever that are out, if you haven't, take a look at them. But they're super bulky. I mean, they're like, they're wider than they are long, I swear. That has its place, but I want this, I'm going to be fishing this, I don't know, I, I just didn't want a huge bait. So there should be some flare in here, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one that I did with the second one. But I need some more room, because I'm going to trim it with my razor blade. So I'm going to trim this up just a little bit, just to get them even. cord up my thread and make sure there's a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little, uh, I don't know if I had to remove something on here, but there's just a little paint or metal or something like that that's sitting there. So I think I'm going to have to kind of be careful with my thread. I don't want to break my thread. So I'm going to put that right up there. This is going to be a little bit tricky because this is a 90 degree angle this head is flat it's not rounded and so this hair is not going to want to come up here down and go straight up it really is not going to want to do that at all so it's these heads are always a little bit trickier when trimming them and when you want to get it as close to that i just don't want my thread to get pushed back too far because then I'm going to have a big collar which is fine but I just really want to prevent that as much as I can so I'll get this pushed around comb it out and I'm just going to try and get it as even as I can and then I'm going to pinch it. So it's not actually resisting as much as I thought it was gonna. It's always a little bit trickier right at the end. Get it down here. That should be good. So I'm going to take it, get my thread up a little, and I'm going to pinch right here and pull and you can see all that flare but I'm going to trim some of that off because I don't need all of that 
And now, the fun part starts. I got a couple good wraps in there. So I'm just going to make sure that all of this, probably when I break my thread on this one, that I've got good wraps down there. I come back here. And I'm going to trim this up. So I got my razor blade. And again, I'm not going to fast forward through any of this. I, I'm kind of curious to see how long this video is going to be if I don't fast forward. I think the last dozen or so that I've done this, I fast forward through it. But I thought, why not? I'll just slow down on this one. And uh, so I turned my light way brighter. If you can't tell, I'm sure you can. And I'm going to feed this down. And I'm just going to push it against my head and kind of feed those up. You dull out a razor blade really quick but they're not super expensive and I'll probably hit my thread but the thing is you'll just hear my bobbin hit my table I'm not really worried about it because I have all of those wraps on there if I had three wraps on here I'd be really worried so I'm just gonna kinda go a little bit at a time and as I get closer to my thread I'm really gonna start to be careful But again, I probably break it half the time. I'm usually not as careful as I'm being now, because it doesn't matter. But, so I don't want to wrap over it. Push down, and really what I try to do is, I try to just make it flush with the head. So you want it, like right here, you want the hair to be flush with the head you don't want it to stick above and when I put some pressure wraps on there it will compress it down but it also add bulk from the thread so I just want to get that as much as I can it's starting to look decent and then I'll take a little scissors and trim off some of those scragglers that are on this side there's one right here So it looks decent. So I'm gonna get my scissors out and I can just kind of fold this back and I can see, I don't know, there's half a dozen or so, a dozen. You just trim those off. Just don't poke yourself with the hook. You could put some head cement down right now to kind of get into that hair if you want. I usually don't. I've got a little fray on my thread, but that's it. I chipped my paint a little too, but that's pretty much going to be covered with thread anyway. So I really just want to make this even as I wrap. And you just, with 210, you just got to be a little, little conscious about adding too many wraps. Because you don't want it to be, again, I don't want that thread to go past where this jig head ends. Get that hair off. So it's looking half decent. And now really with a jig like this, it's pretty easy. Maybe I'll turn my light down again. It's pretty easy to whip finish. Maybe this whip finish might be a little bit small. To right by the head and then I can put my head cement down I almost always put head cement on these collars I'm not a big fan of putting super glue right here because super glue sometimes it dries and it's white this will at least dry and it'll be a little glossy and it kind of darkens up that red which is fine but I just am hesitant to put any super glue close to that head. So there you have it. Gamakatsu 3 8 ounce swim bait hook. Lots of flat wing, black deer hair, green deer hair. Thin, not super thick. It should be thinner if a fish is looking at this from I mean, a fish isn't going to see it going down, but if a fish is seeing this going up, 
which a lot do. It should be a thinner profile. Like and subscribe, drop a comment below, but we'll see you on the next one.